Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say a few words. Um, it's amazing to see you all here today. Um, Wickham and I are so grateful to you all for coming and for your support and generosity. You've all been part of our lives one way or another and have made us the people we are today. First, I'd like to thank all the people who've been involved in the, uh, in the planning and preparation of this day. Um, Sam's given me a lot of the credit, but it's such a team effort across all the suppliers. Uh, there's a nice quote, actually, that, that life, life is weird and we're all a bit weird in our own way. We're really all just looking for someone whose weirdness is mutually compatible with our own. And when we find that in life, we, we team up and, and call that love. Speaking to you for the first time, it felt like uh, reconnecting with someone that I already knew from a, from a past life, um, as if you were singing a song that only I could hear. So hello everyone, as Yaz kindly introduced me, I'm Amesha and I'm one of Sam, or as I call her Sammy's, bridesmaids. So first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to Sam and Wickham for letting me speak today, it really is a huge privilege. So, I first met Sammy, as he has mentioned, about 11,230 days and two hours ago. But you know, who's counting? <laughs> and that was when we were first caught eyes as brand new human beings, having been born on the same day in the same hospital. I'm pretty sure we both remember looking at each other and catching eyes and thinking we'd both be best friends. When I was thinking about this speech, it was actually so difficult to pick out a few stories because there are so many. Me and Sammy have literally grown up together. We've gone to school together, we've traveled together, we've eaten so, so much together and we've laughed so, so much together too. Seeing Sammy was always the highlight of my week as a child and this continued into our teens and then into adulthood as well. She's one of the most genuine and loyal friends She's selfless and caring. She'll be your biggest supporter and biggest cheerleader, and I'm so, so lucky to call her my best friend. Sammy, you always believe the best in people and you always believe the best in me. And I can't thank you enough for your friendship over the last 31 years. So I can't forget Wickham. I actually remember when Sammy went on her first date with Wickham. She was texting me whilst she was on the way there about what, what she was wearing, what she was listening to, how hot it was, how absolutely not nervous she was. <laughs> and I actually looked back on these texts to see what she said after the date. And she literally just texted me one line. It was simply, oh Mesh, I really, really like him. <laughs> Made an impression. <laughs> I knew this was going to be something special because honestly it was the first time I'd heard Sammy say she really, really liked any boy that wasn't Brandon Flowers of the Killers. <laughs> In all seriousness though, Wickham, I thought Sammy was all grown up, but ever since that day, I've seen her blossom into this amazing, secure and happy woman, and that's because of how much you love her. I can see how much you both support each other through all of life's challenges, and honestly, you're both inspirational. I'm so grateful that you both found your soulmates in with each other. The words in your first dance song are so fitting. Your relationship is built on the right foundations, which are the best foundations of love, respect, and of course, a mutual adoration of the Nintendo Wii. So if we can all raise our glasses to Sam and Wickham, 
to a future that will bring an eternity of joy. To Sam and Wickham. Um, hello everyone. It sounds like you know all about me already, uh, but to add a little bit more, I am Wickham's taller and wiser brother. Um, I was truly grateful when Wickham asked me to be his best man because he did such a stellar job at our wedding with, with his speech. Uh, it's just so nice to be able to receive it. I should emphasize the speech part though because from an organizational perspective, this guy is more of a liability than an asset. You, you can imagine my surprise then for when I, when I turned up yesterday to set up and Wickham just has turned into this bruising groomzilla. I, I should have known, because when he first gave me the job of best man, he went out to list out every single activity that needed to happen on the stack, including the part when I got more drunk than you. And then for the groomsmen today, the, the dashing groomsmen over there, he has gone through, I've never actually been to a wedding where the groom has picked out every single item of clothing that we're wearing, from shirt to shoes to undergarments. This has even expanded beyond the groomsmen party. I, I found out that Wickham has been so controlling and wants to be, make sure that this, this ship stays on course, but not seem, seem overbearing. He has started sending emails from Sam's email address. So, so if you have any correspondence with Sam over the last six months, please do take it with a pinch of salt. Um, now, for those of you who don't know Wickham very well, this speech should hopefully give you some insight into who he is. What's going on behind that chiseled, gormless expression on his face? <laughs> well, he has a number of pretty obscure interests. US politics, random independent movies, an unhealthy obsession with The Simpsons. And if you get a chance, he does a fantastic Apu impression. So please do seek that out afterwards. Now, as he's grown up and evolved, He's become a bit more of a Ross Geller paleontologist than any kind of Indiana Jones figure. But Wickham is a man who loves his creature comforts. His bed, his food, his robot hoover, his robot lawnmower, and yes, even his air purifier. This guy really is Ross Geller. Now, there was a brief period of time when he first went to university that Wickham actually embraced the night out. And I'd get panicked calls from mum saying, Madhu, Wickham has gone to Elephant and Castle. And there are drugs in Elephant and Castle. Now, I could stand here making a few jokes about how this guy's no fun, how he's a lightweight. But unfortunately, I think it's something that may run in the family, maybe a weakness for the whole Jaitunga clan, excluding Dad. Um, Wickham's a reliance on others actually started out quite, at quite a young age. I remember one time when we first went to reception, and as you, as, as you normally um, are when you're told to, to go for lunch or go for a break, you're told to hold someone else's hand. And me being the affable gentleman you see in front of you, I thought, let's meet someone else. Um, so I went to hold someone else's hand, and only to find Wickham turned to me furiously and said, no, you have to hold my hand and nobody else's. That's one of the main reasons I didn't hold a girl's hand until I was 21. It is my great pleasure to conduct Groom and Samantha's Buddhist wedding ceremony. The groom and his family will now formally commit to the welfare of the bride <coughs> by providing her with jewelry and a tali pill, which is a red sari, which is the first attire the bride wears as a new one. Madhu, can you please hand over the gold necklace to Vikram?
before you met Sam, I think I was one of the few people who could attest to your caring nature. When we were little, and I got scared at night, I didn't want to bother Mum and Dad. And Wickham, you had a sofa bed in your room. So forced to have it, after seven or eight years of live sharing a room, I would sneak in and just curl up in the bed for the night. Wickham would notice. How could he not? I disturbed his perfectly manicured aura of sleep. But there'd be no judgment or ridicule. It would just be a safe place to sleep for the night. And I see that caring, um, <laughs> caring embrace every time you look at Sam. Sam, you are perfect for Wickham in every single way. And I could, th I, I could not think of a better person to be handing the remote to. As rare as it is that we say it out loud, we love you deeply. And with that, I'd like everyone to please be upstanding and raise a glass to Wickham and Sam. To Wickham and Sam. First of all, as my dad would say, I'm extremely lucky to have my mom and my dad as my parents. <laughs> Growing up an only child, my parents became my siblings, mentors and best friends. Mum dedicated her life to raising me, from giving me extra homework before school did, to being a shoulder to cry on when things seemed overwhelming. She has always put me first, um, even with little things like taking the a burnt bit of pizza so that I can have the nice part. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have a mum who I can go to with any problem and you always make things better. My dad has always been an inspiration to me. From arriving in the UK from Sri Lanka as a neurology registrar with only £50 in his pocket, or so he tells me, he has worked so hard to build a life for us. Um, already saving for my university education when I was just a few years old. He has taught me how to be responsible and to be present in the moment, but plan for the future. And he always knows how to cheer me up with a dad joke, even if I have heard them all before. I'm so grateful also to have my family with me. Grandma, I'm so pleased you've been able to make it, despite being unwell recently. It's really lovely to see you here today. My aunt, my family friends from Sri Lanka, thank you so much for making the journey. And Dorothy, who's come all the way from Hong Kong. It's been 14 years since we last met and it's been so wonderful, it means so much to me that you'd come all this way to be here today. Speaking of old friends, I've been blessed with some of the best friends a person could ask for. From nursery to school to university and work, I'm sure my school friends will remember me as that awkward, slightly neurotic girl whose skirt went down to her ankles. Perhaps not much has changed. But thank you for sticking by me nonetheless. Even through my more embarrassing moments, such as when Rachel and I got lost um, on the, um, and we failed the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh expedition. The only team in Sussex to have done so, I might add. Um, to my uni friends and my Kings Lynn crew, you've been my home away from home. And I also have to thank my beautiful bridesmaids, Imesha, Ishabi and Sara. You've quite literally been here with me from day one. And it's so wonderful to share this day with you, as I've shared my whole life with you. Auntie and Uncle, as I'm sure most of you will know, are two of the most generous, strong and fun-loving people I've ever met. Auntie is the kind of mother who cannot visit without bringing boxes upon boxes of treats for her children, <laughs> despite the protests. <laughs> Uncle is the go-getter of the family, who won't even let a torn rotator cuff stop him from getting on the golf course. I couldn't ask for better in-laws. Thank you both for instantly treating me as one of your own. I believe, welcome to the family, was the first thing you ever said to me when I came up to Stourbridge all those years ago. Lastly, I have to thank the man sitting beside me. Today is the fourth anniversary of our meeting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Wickham came with several five-star reviews. <laughs> and so I couldn't refuse. Auntie Maya, Uncle Andrew, and Uncle Mahendra, who married us today, had all separately recommended Wickham for me. 
At the time, I was wondering whether I'd ever find someone who could handle my introverted nature, my lack of interest in clubbing, and my somewhat misguided attempts at humour. Well, after a few back and forth text messages, with me trying not to appear too keen, taking a day or so to reply each time, um, we met in London for a coffee. Instantly, it was like talking to an old friend. And after a couple of hours, I was already looking forward to the next time I'd get to catch up with him. And we immediately made plans for our next date. Wickham, you've just been incredible. Whenever I've had times when I'm stressed and anxious, you know how to calm me down and make me see the bigger picture. You always put me first, and I'm grateful to you for constantly being by my side. But most importantly, I never really had believed that I would ever find love until I met Wickham. With him, I'm at home. Wickham, you're my best friend, my soulmate, the Frodo to my Sam. And much like Frodo and Sam, I'm so excited for the next adventure with you. And now I'd like to raise my, a toast with one of these glasses <laughs> um, to my husband, to my family, and to all of you. Thank you. Planning a wedding has certainly been perilous uh, the last couple of years, to say the least. Um, but despite having our official marriage last year, I'm so pleased we did uh, persist in putting together a day like, uh, like today. Um, we've all seen um, you guys less than we usually would have um, over the last um, couple of years. And today's a chance to really celebrate um, those connections and to bring, bring people together again and family and friends on both sides. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, that photo, slideshow mum, was really moving. Uh, and there's this photo in there uh, where we, the three of us were born incredibly premature. And um, there's this photo of the three of us. We're like tiny and we're basically, we're kind of, we just fit into mum's hands, um, the three of us. And it looks kind of miraculous and you know how tiny we are. Um, but to get us from that moment, that uncertain moment to where we are today, I think it, it's, you know, it's a lifetime of, of commitment and that we'll never be able to thank you um, uh, enough for that. To Chula and Prachasti, Thank you, first and foremost, for raising the utterly wonderful and unique human being that is your daughter. Uh, Sam and her mum are incredibly close. Uh, on most days, I will hear them chatting on the phone in the evening in the way that sisters would. Um, Prashasti is the only person in the, in the world whose Sri Lankan curries can match my mother's, um, and in the case of a lamb curry, perhaps even exceed it. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Um, Chula, on the other hand, will always enlighten us with his endless wisdom, uh, whether that be about religion or philosophy, um, a new invention idea or sage gardening advice uh, uh, that we're now in desperate need of in our, in our new house. All I can say to both of you is that whenever we come round to visit and spend time with you, um, it feels like coming home. Um, I know that Sam means the world to you, um, so know that rather than losing a daughter today, uh, you're gaining a son. And uh, now if you'll let me say a few words about uh, my wife, Sam. Uh, doesn't she look uh, perfect today, ladies and gentlemen? Um, um, she often gives me a hard time because I often don't notice what, I'm, what she's wearing or what, whether she's wearing makeup or not, but I noticed today, Sam. And it's because you're perfect regardless, whether you're in a bride's dress or if you've just woken up in the morning. Um, in describing the impact Sam has had on my life, um, I'll start by um, quoting uh, my friend Ed. It's kind of crazy that Ed gets two shout outs this evening. <laughs> um, um, but uh, he's, he's a straight talking guy. And uh, so um, in, a, in a kind of a frank assessment of our relationship, he said uh, to me, quote, she makes you less weird. <laughs> Perhaps that came out in Maddie's speech, but... Uh, um, it's just in her nature, really, to put other people's happiness above her own. Um, and that applies to her friends, her family, uh, her patients, uh, who she works incredibly hard and long hours for and me um, and that makes all of us who are in her life rather fortunate indeed 
it was simply a feeling of being more comfortable in my skin, uh, more assured, less of a stranger to the universe, and more uh, complete and whole as a person in her presence than in her absence. Um, I've had that from day one uh, and every day since. Um, so if you could all raise a glass, and um, here's to many more weird and wonderful moments to come.